Hi, this is Frankie, and in this video we're going to be looking at making a tab component in React. So it's going to be a basic tab switcher, and it's going to have an animated underline under the active tab. So let's just dive right into it. We have uh, an app component which shows the usage of this tab component. We have our tabs here. There's an active prop, which has an ID for whichever tab is active. There's an onChange prop for when we change the selected tab by clicking on it. And there's some children that have a key prop that indicates the ID of that tab. And then at the bottom down here, we have our content object, which contains the content. And these could be React elements or whatever else you want to, to render when the tab is active. And then we access the, the key that is the active state which we set whenever we click a tab. So we display that on the screen. Now we're in the browser, we don't have our tabs component implemented yet, but we have our tab content down here because we default the initial state to A tab. We could change that to B tab, and then that would be the active tab. So let's go over to our tab component. We're gonna to need to do quite a few things here. We're gonna to need to render our children, wrap them in div, we're going to need to do some DOM measurements to see where the things are so that we can absolutely position this underline we have here. And then we need to wire up the on change so that we know when a tab changes, which updates the parent, which sets a new state, which renders tabs again, and then in tabs we display it especially. So I might get the DOM measurement wrong, but I'll try to cut that out of the video. So first we need to do uh, a react.children.map. So what this is going to do is it's going to transform each child uh, by a map function. This works basically the same as array.map, but because the react uh, children prop is an opaque object, meaning it doesn't have any documented structure, we need to use the special react.children helper to iterate over it safely. For example, if we only passed one tab, then it wouldn't be an array, so dot map on it would fail. So we use the react children helper. So then we're going to return a react element here. So let's do a div, and then we're going to pass the child in here. Pop over here, we have our tabs. Uh, we're going to need to add a class name here, tabs, double underscore tab. And what that's going to do is change the styles. So we have our very strange styles going on here. And then if we click them, nothing happens. So let's wire up that. We're going to reformat our code a little bit and add an on click. Uh, we don't need the event object. What we're going to do is this dot props dot on change, and then we have our child, which is this element here, this div, and it has a key. So we're going to use that key, uh, child dot key. And if we come over here, we can click B, C, and it's changing this tab content down here. So that's all well and good. Normally you wouldn't use key like this, but since we're just using divs. It's the, the best way to do it in this particular case. You could have a custom tab element component and have a special prop on that that isn't passed down, but we're just going to do it this way for the example. Okay, so now we're rendering our tabs. One more thing we want to do is have a tab active. So we're going to take our class name and make that class name variable. Class name is that if child.key is equal to this.props.active class name. And we'll use a template literal here to append onto our class name. And then we're passing that to the div. And we come over here and we'll make the hover and active styles is just the same for this example. So now A is active. 
and if we switch to B, then B is active. Okay, so now we get into the, the fun stuff. So far, this has just been basic React uh, programming. So we're going to need a ref so that we can measure where the uh, top level wrapper is. So if we take an element, which is a DOM element, and we say this dot root is element, then we're going to need to add a constructor. And we're going to have a sizes property in our state. We're also going to have a child elements, or we'll just call it elements object, which is going to store the actual DOM nodes for each of these children. So we're going to have a ref element, and we're going to set this dot elements child dot key equal to element. So we're going to have in our elements object here a key or a tab, the IDs right here. Those are going to be mapping a tab to an element, a DOM node. So we're going to use that in our measurements. Now we need to actually do the measurements. So we're going to have a function called get sizes. And what this is going to do is it's going to look at all of our refs and it's going to find the sizes of each element, store them in state, and also return them so we can use them immediately if we need to. So the first thing we need to do is get the size of our or the position and size of our root element. Root bounds this dot root, which is what we're setting down here in our ref. This dot root dot get bounding client rect. Okay, then we're going to need to go object.keys this.elements dot for each. Okay, so we're looking at each item in the elements object. Okay, so we have our element. We're going to create an object for to store the sizes in. Just for a temporary state. And then we're going to uh, measure the element. Get found in client rect. Okay, so then we need to figure out what the left position of our element is relative to the root. So we're going to take root bounds or element bounds dot left minus root bounds dot left. We're going to replace that with the right, and this one we have to do it reversed. Then we're going to say sizes key equals left and right. And we're going to set state with our sizes object, and then we're going to return sizes. Okay, so we have our sizes spelled bounds wrong. Okay, so now the last thing we need to do to actually make this do anything is this dot get sizes. We'll store that in the sizes variable for now, which we're not going to use. And then down here, what we're going to do is we're going to put a pre tag. This is like console.log, but it always stays up to date with whatever we have going on. So we see that uh, our left is 0 for the first tab, and the right is 154 relative to the right of our tabs component. Is this changing the styles? That's strange. Uh, I'm just going to change this to a console.log for now. So then down in our console we have our sizes object. I'm going to do JSON. Okay, so now we're able to see 
the positions without messing with the styles of our tabs component. Okay, so now what we need to do is figure out what position this underlying element should have. Now in our CSS, we set it to position absolute and top to 100%. We also have a margin bottom with the same size as our border because this is absolute so it won't take up space. And then we just set the left and right to zero to start, which is what shows like the full width here just for demonstration. So if we come over here, we're going to need a style object. Okay, so we're going to have a get underlying style method. And if not, or if this dot props dot active is null, then we're going to return left zero, right 100%. And that's not going to apply right now because we have an active. Okay, so then what we need to do is say, uh, or for the first render, for the first render, this dot sizes will be an object with no length or no keys. That's not true anymore, which is why we see it taking a full width because we're not returning any styles here. Okay, so now we're going to take the size as this dot state dot sizes, this dot props dot active, and we're going to return left is equal to size dot dot left pixels. And right is size dot right pixels. So now if we click on these tabs, it moves around from left to right. Oh, one other thing I would like to do for this demonstration is make this a very long title. So now we can see that it's snapping to the full size of the element and not the uh, not an absolute fixed size. That's why we're doing all this measurement. And you might not know the width of the tab, or it might just be for convenience that you don't want to hard code what size the tab is at. So now we pop back over to our tabs and we need to, uh, if we have our sizes, we want to set a transition. So we're going to come up here, transition time, 500 milliseconds for this demo. Normally you would want to do like 250 milliseconds. Transition style is equal to uh, left transition time milliseconds and right transition time milliseconds. Okay, then we take our transition style down here and pass that as the transition style. So now it animates a little bit strangely, but that's it mostly it just looks better when you have a uh, faster animation, but it resizes gracefully because we're using absolute positioning. Uh, both sides are animating to the correct position about the same time. So uh, one more thing we have to do is handle updates. So let's take C title and say it's going to be array dot from Uh, math, or we're going to say, let's see, so if we do this dot state dot active equal to b tab, 
and it's going to have a short, uh, just a title. And then if it's not a tab, then it's going to have a very long title. So what this is going to do is show us a problem where if we go to B tab, you see that it's resized, but it's at the wrong size. But then when it's back to the uh, initial size, when we first render it, the tabs line up cor uh, correctly again. So what we need to do is handle an update. So we don't actually use the sizes variable here, but we're going to say component did update. And we're going to do this to get sizes again, but only previous props. If previous props dot children is this dot props dot children, or previous props dot children is not this dot props dot children, and previous props dot active is not equal to this dot props dot active. So if either of these have changed, we're going to run get sizes again. Now why do we need to do this? Well the main reason is that we have our state that we're setting in get sizes. So if we call get sizes and it runs this and it does a set state, that causes another update. So then we come back to our component did update and it calls get sizes again and then that does a set state and just goes on and on in a circle forever. So what we need to do is check that some of our props have actually changed. And if they have, then we get sizes again. And then we do the set state and then component to update runs us again, but the props haven't changed, so we don't do anything. So now if we go, we can see it's animating a little awkwardly, but gets the job done between these different positions. Uh, so we're just going to reduce our time down to 200 milliseconds and then see the final product. And it animates snappily between the, the different tabs, despite our very strange changing tab size user interface. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you do, leave a like and subscribe. Thanks.